Thank you very much. So I'm going to walk everyone through the budget. It's going to come in essentially four sections, the salary, special education, and annual expenses. Then I'm going to talk about the school's contributions uh, to offset the cost. Um, I want to also highlight some regional staffing data. Um, and I also want to discuss and explain uh, revolving funds, what they are, what we have, how we use them. So I'm, I'm hoping that that is helpful. So first of all, um, for 2000, 2000, for FY19, um, to roll our teacher salaries ahead, we're using 2% as an estimate. We're currently negotiating our contract, but 2% is a safe estimate. Um, and that does include steps and lanes. For those who don't know what steps and lanes are, um, when you're a teacher, you can, you can increase the amount of your earnings by either getting more education and moving to a higher pay salary. You also move to the right as you work additional years. So when we say steps and lanes, that is um, what we're talking about. Um, and the 2.5% increase is being used as an estimate. It's a very good estimate um, because we have not done steps and lanes yet for those other, uh, for the other units. There are two new positions. Do I have a pointer here? Is it, is it the little green thing? Or is it on the side? I don't want to touch anything because I'll... Beautiful. So, top. Good. So I've also, I'm also requesting two new positions for next year, an elementary math coach and a curriculum coordinator or assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction. The curriculum um, position has been discussed for many years, um, and I feel that we're at the time, we're at the right time for the organization to do it, and I want to sort of walk everyone through why I believe that to be the case. Um, my, this is my second year as superintendent, and I spent a great deal of time last year in the elementary um, because I'm essentially a high school person and everything begins there. I, I needed to understand it thoroughly. So I spent a great deal of time there with the principals and the coaches. And what I discovered, um, at least the term that I kept using was we had sort of a leadership infrastructure problem. And it came to light when we uh, developed the literacy committee and began to understand um, some of the things that were keeping us from really achieving what we want to achieve in literacy. So I'm going to walk you through what we did. So you have your three elementary schools, and each school obviously has a principal. That's a smiley face with a P, that's the principal. The principals talk to one another about literacy, and so they, they try to stay on the same page. But you've got three schools all doing English language arts. Those are your classrooms. So Memorial Park, you literally have three, three Ks, two first, two second, two third, and two fourth. Then at Jefferson, you've got, actually there are four kindergartens and only two at Eston, but eventually there'll be three and you didn't want me to have to make 75 more smiley faces. <laughs> but essentially those are your classrooms in the three elementary schools and you have one principal. We have an English language arts, we have a, what her official title is, um, is what is your official title? Thank you, District Literacy Coach. I'm calling her a coordinator so that you have that term. But Karen McKinnon is, our, is the person that she is our content expert in elementary literacy. She works hand in hand with the principals and they are a team to decide on curriculum and instructional um, improvements and also doing data meetings. So what we had was before this year we had um, Ms. McKinnon, as our ELA coordinator, working with the principals to reach the classrooms for each one of these classrooms, and Karen was overseeing, and in and out of every single one of those classrooms on a regular basis. It was a lot. What we did this year, this year we added one component. There was a missing piece. There was no one on the ground in the schools to handle the, the messages that were coming from the teachers, the curriculum needs that they were expressing, and, and there, was no, there was just a missing piece, and it was, it was these lead teachers, and we added three of them this year for, for a, a very reasonable amount of money. I believe we pay $1,600 stipend for each one of those three coordinators. This year is a very different year in the Rockland Public Schools because of these three 
coordinators that we added. It allows Ms. McKinnon to actually do her job and support the principals in a way because now she has true buy-in from the teachers because she's able to work with them. And they have someone who's a sounding board. So those lead teachers are taking in information from their colleagues, they're bringing it back to us, and the, the reverse is true. They're taking in information. They're, they're, these three lead teachers meet with Karen and the principals on a regular basis to look at data. And I will tell you, it is a much better year in the Rockland Public Schools this year because of this model. Now we go on to math. We have our three schools. We have our three, what are they? Principals. Yeah, that's right. And they're talking to one another. And we have our classrooms. We have, and we have our um, work from the principals because they're in charge of everything that happens in their building. And this year, we added lead teachers in math for each, of, for each of the three schools. And it's made a big difference. But there's no content expert in math. We are currently really lacking a content expert in math. Ms. Forlizzi, our assistant superintendent, used to be that person, and we never replaced her five, six years ago, mm -hmm. seven years ago. ago. So we, this is why I'm asking, asking for a math coach. We need a content expert. We need someone who can do um, Eek. Someone who can make these connections for us and really dial up um, the level of response to testing. So testing is great, but if you don't do anything with the results, it's a waste of time. So you need a content expert like Karen. She's very in, in touch with what are the newest trends, what's going on, what are people using, and her expertise is used to, to help the principals and help the teachers get better. We need the same in math. Um, the next position I've asked for is Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction, and this is why. So now you have your five schools, and you have your five principals, and you have your classrooms, and your lead teachers in Jefferson and Aston. And at the middle school, you've got a hybrid. They're a little different. There aren't, you've got, they're, they're grouped by grades, but they're, they're also beginning to be more departmental. So you have a science to lead, you have a history, you have an ELA lead, and you have a math lead. But it's really more of a department head structure. When you get to the high school, it becomes um, very department oriented because you have 10th graders taking senior classes, you have some seniors who might jump and take a sophomore class that they need, and so on and so forth. So it's a much different sort of leadership structure. You have department heads. And you have all of these folks reporting essentially to me. And I, I work at, in, this, in this role and have worked in this role as curriculum uh, coordinator, and I love that role. Um, but I think with the structures we have in place now at the, at the elementaries, it's time for us to, to make that next step, to hire that curriculum coordinator who would be responsible for curriculum, um, instruction, and assessment, so they that this person would oversee K to 12, our alignment, our goals, our our intended outcomes, and it, he would he or she would work with the principals, with the curriculum coordinators, to design professional development, and so on and so forth. And that person would help tie all that together, and that's that's why I feel we need these two positions. So I, now I'll just jump back into the the uh, presentation. The second big component of our budget is special education. Um, these are eight, FY18 numbers with about a 2% increase, 2,785,338. It's a very volatile part of our budget. Last year, again, October 1st, we had a $750,000 $750, increase unanticipated from move-ins. So special education is always volatile. Our annual expenses, these are every, anything from legal and business to student activity accounts, athletics, $296,000. I'm going to come back to that number because athletics is a great example of a revolving fund cost that is, that is truly funded primarily by the school. So we collect approximately $60,000 a year in receipts from athletics. That's user fees, that's gates, the whole nine yards. But we spend on, yeah, 200, we spend 296000 So that means that the district is paying 
you know, the vast majority of our athletic fees, which is fine, and it's as it should be. Um, the same thing goes for buses, but I just kind of want everyone to understand. I put the VOTEC in the Nor Norfolk Aggie at the bottom here, 2,156,235. That is the agreed upon number that we have with the town. And I have the little, the little blue asterisk there because when we go forward, we're going to, we're going to retain some, get some of that money back. Now, this, this is um, the amount, all of these items here are either coming from state or federal grants. Um, Circuit Breaker is actually a grant, but I put it separate because it's something, it's money that needs to be used each year. And then our revolving funds. And those, we have revolving funds. I'm going to go into detail on that in a little bit. But we plan to contribute $814,932 of revolving funds to next year's budget. Circuit Breaker, we plan to spend $600,000. And again, you have to spend, um, you have to at least spend the, the previous year's revolving before you move, you move ahead. So the total contribution from grant circuit breaker revolving accounts is $2,607,932. So if you skip down here, our total request for budget for next year for FY19 is $27,063,432. And you, when you subtract the FY19 budget, the 18 budget from the 19 budget, we are asking for an increase of $1,256,724, which is approximately 4.9% over the previous year. And when you hear 4.9%, back of my mind says, nobody ever gets a 4.9% raise. It's not a raise. It it's, it's nearly, I would say, 3.5% three, three just to roll over salaries. So I hesitate to throw around percentages when you're talking about what you're asking for as an increase because it's misleading. No one ever gets a 4.9 percent raise, but it's not a raise. Okay, the point I want to make with this slide is that 73.5 percent of our budget is salary. And I think people need to understand that. There is not a lot of discretionary funds flying around. Um, we, we need every person that we have um, to work with our students. And then our, our special education part of our budget is volatile. Now when I put that kind of number up and say salaries, then someone should say, because I always say, do we have too many teachers? Are we paying, are we, are we hiring too many teachers? So I just look, these are our, some of our neighbors. Um, so our student to teacher ratio in two, FY 2017, we had the highest of the five that I'm showing you. We have Abington, Hanover, Braintree, and then the state average. So our per student to teacher ratio is higher, is the, obviously the highest of all five. So we don't have too many teachers. And I can break this out 75 ways to Sunday. This is just one way to look at it. Um, but again, this is right on the website, right on DESE website. Anybody can pull this up. Our average teacher salary, because you might say, well, you're just paying them too much. We're not paying them too much. Our Median salary, FY16, is the latest data that the state has collected and posted, so that's why I'm using FY16. But our, te our average teacher salary is $74,500, and the state average is $76,442. So we are right in the middle. Um, our, we're, that's pretty much where we are. We're right in the middle. I'd say a little bit below average, but we are not overpaying and we are not overstaffed. The next thing that is often asked about is, um, when you talk about budget, is revolving funds. What, what is in a revolving account? Um, so a revolving fund, and this is directly from, from the Mass Department of Revenue, a revolving fund is something that a school or a municipality can set up that is not a part and not a specific line item in the budget that is voted. So student activities, so if you're a member of the art club and you sell chicken and you sell 75 chickens and you make $125 and some in cash and some in checks, well, it all gets deposited into a student activity account. So we need those kind of accounts um, because there are many things like that going on. But it's not just for student activities. We also have one for busing. We have one for special education. We have a, a number of student activity accounts. And so some people look at, at our budget sheets and say, wow, the school has nearly $2 million in these, in these revolving accounts. Why aren't they spending it? 
We're not spending it because it's not ours to spend, and I'll show you exactly what we have. These are our revolving accounts. I put, we have, we currently have, I think, 13 revolving accounts. The ones that are highlighted in yellow, we have quite a bit of discretion as to how we use those accounts. So those, those accounts, we have quite a bit of discretion. WRPS, we don't tell Mr. Murphy how to spend his money. Youth Commission, we don't tell them how to spend their money. Um, donation account, daycare, cafeteria. So what I'm putting up here, this is 2017. This is what we took in, that's what we put out. The reason I'm showing you two years is that these are very fluid accounts, okay? Revolving funds fluctuate with demand. So if you look here at, um, what's, what's a good one to look at? Facility sure. rental, okay? So in 2017, we took in 106,844 in facility rental, but we expended 234,371 because our buildings are old and they cost money, okay? But if you go back to facility rental the previous year, we took in 103,356 and we only spent 61,000. So my point for showing you this is, Number one, it, it differs from year to year based on what we need and what we're doing. And these are not just giant slush funds that we can do anything we want with. So that, that I just need everyone to understand that. Um, our revolving account books are wide open. Anyone can call me, make an appointment. I will show you how they're spent, um, why the balances are what they are. You could look at a balance for um, facility rental at this, actually, a better one would be um, cafeteria. You could say, you might see that we have a million dollars in the cafeteria revolving account. In May, it'll be 100000 And we need to have um, certain amounts of money, especially in special education, because we never know what's going to happen. Tomorrow, two families could move in that cost $400,000 to educate their children. We have no way to know that. And if that happened and we don't have this money, then we have to go back to the town and have a special meeting to ask for more money, and I'll get fired. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. That's, that is the entire budget presentation.